How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to share with you 22 insanely useful Canva tips and tricks to help you speed up your workflow and improve your designs. I did a similar video back in 2019 and lots of viewers and YouTubers loved it. However, Canva has added many new features since then, so it's officially time I did an updated version. Stay tuned to the end and I'll share some complimentary resources you can use in conjunction with Canva to make your designs even better. If you find this video useful, feel free to like and subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss out. So let's get straight into it. My number one trick to save tons of time is single key shortcuts. Simply tap R on your keyboard to generate a rectangle. You can then resize it using the handles in the side. I'll just change the color. Again, you can tap R and generate as many rectangles as you want. You can generate a circle by tapping C. Again, you can adjust it by using the handles in the corner. Simply tap T to generate text. I'll just type in my website here if you want to check it out. Lastly, tap L to create a line. You can move it around using the arrows that appear underneath it. Tip two, new line styles. While we have a line on screen, another new feature Canva recently added is the line styles. All you need to do is select the line then go up to the top and you'll see these new menu options on the top. You have weight, you have line styles where you can adjust what the line looks like. Then you can adjust what displays at the start of the line or at the end of the line. That looks pretty good. Tip three, text effects. Now that we have some text on the page, Canva have now added some text effects. You can find them by selecting the text and clicking effects. I'll just make the font slightly different so you can see it easier. Let's go and monster at extra bold and I'll change the font color to white. Now that the text is selected, click on effects. Now you have shadow, lift, hollow, splice, echo, glitch, neon and curve. By selecting one of these, new menu options appear under, underneath and you can simply adjust them how you like. What I'll do is add some lift and make it brighter so now that the text stands out from the background. You can go through all of these and play with them as you like. You also have neon where you can adjust the brightness that doesn't really have much effect or the glitch effect. You can adjust the direction or the offset. You can even curve your text here and maybe add it out to the top. I mean, there you go. Tip four, quickly add an image. Something you may not know is that you can drag in an image directly onto the page from a folder. This will save you from having to upload the image, selecting it and then dragging it onto the page. This will save you tons of time. Tip five, drop shadow effects for images. This is another new feature that Canva recently added, the ability to add shadow effects to images. Firstly, make sure your image is selected, then select effects in a top left hand corner. Once it's loaded, scroll down to the bottom and you'll see two new boxes, shadows and frames. If you haven't connected these yet, it will appear in a box that will say connect. So just simply click connect and it will display all the options. So if you click on glow, you can add a glow effect to your item. They also have a drop shadow here, or you can add an angle effect, curves, page lift, backdrop. Now, once you click on backdrop, you can see this um, icon has these lines on it. If you click on it again, you'll get a menu option. Here, you can adjust the options for that drop shadow. So as you can see, the shadow goes on the bottom 
and I can simply show it moving down so it looks like it's floating you can also change the horizontal angle I don't know if you can see there or the transparency to make it brighter or darker I'll keep it there and the blur as well so you can fade it out or fade it in that's too much so I'll add a little bit of blur to make it realistic you can play around with these features to make it as realistic as possible but this is a really cool effect and makes your item stand out looks like it's floating tip six outline effect as well as adding a cool and realistic backdrop effect you can also add an outline to images you might have seen this used by many YouTubers in their thumbnails to add a white border around their image. You can now do this easily in Canva. Simply add in an image. I'll just add a picture of this woman, make it slightly larger. Make sure the image is selected, then click effects scroll down to where we had shadows and click on the first one called glow now click on it again to access the settings firstly change the color to white drop the blur to zero increase the transparency to 100 now increase the size to whatever you want and as you can see it's an outline effect that's probably too big but you can have it here youtubers will love this one for their thumbnails if you're a fellow youtuber feel free to say hello in the comments i would love to network with you brainstorm ideas and potentially collaborate in the future hopefully i can learn something from you and you can learn something from me one thing to note here is that if you click away from this the effect is applied Alternatively, you can click apply, but once that has been applied, you can no longer go in here and change the settings. You'd have to undo it. So if I click away, this effect has been applied to this image. The only way to change it is to undo it several times to get rid of it. Now, one thing you can do is you can add multiple outlines. So if I just do this whole process again, change the size, click on apply, I'll, I'll select it again, click effects, click on glow, and now it's added another outline as you can see there. What I'll do is maybe change that to red, change the blur, change the transparency, and as you can see it's added another outline, and you can add as many outlines as you want. There you go. Don't forget to check out my website, Learn With Seb, and sign up to my newsletter for more useful tips and tricks. Now, tip seven, precisely move elements. If I wanted to move this, I'd click on it. Now I can use the arrow keys to move it one pixel left, one pixel to the right, or up or down. Alternatively, you could click shift and up which moves it 10 pixels in any direction as you can see if you want even finer control of the elements you could add grid lines so go to file and go show rulers this creates a ruler at the top you can now hover over the ruler and these double ended arrows appear click on it and pull it pull it down you can then create a grid line. You can create as many grid lines as you want and you pull them down. Or if you go into the left hand side, you can add another grid line here to line them up. Now you can line up the images however you want. And elements snap to these lines. So that's useful if you wanted perfect positioning and grid lines. What I'll do is just get rid of this lady and then you can see the grid lines. To get rid of them, you just click on it and drag them off the screen. Alternatively, go to File, Show Guides, and it disappears. 
Select hidden elements. You often find yourself in a situation where you've got multiple elements on top of each other or some underneath. Sometimes you want to select the element underneath but it's really difficult because you can't find the edge. This resizing option appears and that's not what I want. I want to click I want to click on a green one instead of the purple one but it's very difficult. It's not allowing me to do it. So what you can do is if you hold down control and then control click it selects the element behind it as you can see it went to the second one and the third one clicking on it again makes it disappear if i click on the first one second one or third one now what i can do is i can move that element using the arrow keys that i just showed you so i can move that left or right or move it out of position if i wanted to so that's really useful if you wanted to select hidden elements. Grouping elements. If you wanted to group these elements, you can highlight all those elements. They're all highlighted. Then click group and now you can move them as one. Once they're grouped together, you can then resize them like that. Alternatively, if I delete these, highlight these I can move them as one or increase them proportionally as you can see the text and image increases proportionally tip 12 new canva frames for photos this is a new feature that allows you to add a wide range of frames and borders to images you can find it in effects under frames Click see all and select a frame and it will be automatically applied. They have these device frames but I'll come back to them later. These neon ones are pretty cool. Some of these frames have additional settings. You can see when the button has lines on it that means that it will have additional settings within it so you just click the button again and you can see settings to change the crop position or dimension but not all of these frames have those options. Tip 13. Lock background elements. This is useful if you are creating templates to be used over and over again. Let me just create a rectangle to show you. Say I want to lock it on a page so I can use it for different designs. I'll select this rectangle and click the padlock symbol in the top right hand menu. Now I don't have to worry about accidentally selecting it or moving it and it won't get in the way. I can do the same thing with the text. The padlock symbol will appear in the bottom right of the element to show that it has been locked. You can undo it by selecting the locked item and clicking the padlock symbol again in the top right. Tip 14. Share templates and designs. This is useful if you are sending templates to clients or work in a team. Just click share in the top menu then there are options to share a link to edit, share a link to use as a template, or just share a link to view. I'll select share a link to use as a template, then click copy link. I can now paste that in an email to give to people. I'll show you what it looks like in a new tab. Anyone who clicks the link will have access to use template. Tip 15 create a team. On the home page click create a team in the sidebar. Enter your team name. You can add a logo if you wish then click continue. Now you can invite people to your team just by entering their email addresses. Your team is now created and you can access it in the sidebar. Once on the team page you can see your designs, folders and invite more people to join the team. This is a very useful feature if you collaborate with others to create designs or if you run a small business. Tip 16, save brand colors, logos and fonts. Another useful feature is the ability to save your brand kit for quick access. On the homepage, click on brand kit in the left hand menu. Here you can add your brand logo, your brand colors and your brand font. 
The brand logo and brand fonts require the Canva Pro version. However, you can add up to three brand colors in the free version. You can do that simply by clicking the plus sign and then selecting your color or you can enter the color code underneath. Once that's done, you can go back into any design you're creating, click on colors and your color should appear. Tip 17, find company logos. A little known feature Canva has is the ability to add company logos. You can find a range of these logos from large corporations in the elements section. Some of these are paid, a lot of these are free. You can search for any company you want and see if it comes up. It won't have every single company logo, but all the big tech companies will be there and a lot of the social media companies will be there. So that's good if you want to promote your social media channels. Tip 18, add hyperlinks. If you're creating PDFs to distribute to people, a useful feature is to add links. You can do this quickly by highlighting the text, then clicking the link button at the top, then enter your URL and click apply. It will underline the text, so if you don't want that, then you can just remove the underline in the font settings. Now, when you download it as a PDF, the links will be clickable. Tip 19, create device mockups. You can find them by clicking on elements, then typing in frames. Then scroll down and you will see frames for various devices. Add them to the page. This green and blue background means that it is replaceable. Simply drag in an image and you now have mockups to use as your marketing material. I'll show you an example with an iPhone, a laptop and a desktop Mac. You can edit the position of the images simply by double clicking on the image, then moving them around as you can see, as you can see here. You can also make the images larger within the device and then just click away and it will apply that selection. Tip 20, duplicate images quickly. Alt click on an image and drag it to a new position and this will duplicate the image. If you're on a Mac, use option click and drag and this will duplicate the image as well. Tip 21, create video intros and outros. I created this logo animation in Canva. This is another cool feature you can do with Canva that can help you create YouTube intros or outros. On the homepage, type in video, then select a blank video. You can of course create any sized video you want. I'll start with a blank one. However, they have loads of templates here as a starting block. I'll first change the background color to black. This timer at the top designates how long the page will run for. At the moment, it's five seconds. I'll keep the intro quite short, so I'll shorten it to one second. Now I want to add a pre-made animation to catch the eye. You can find animations in elements and just search for what you want. I'll choose this one and add it to the page. If you click the play button in the top menu, you can preview the entire video. We've only got one page so far, so it will be a short video. Now the animation just plays on repeat, but it will only show for one second because that's what I've set the page to. This might clip the animation before it finishes its first cycle, so I might have to change the page time later on. Now I want to add the next scene to be my logo fading in. To do this, I'll create a new page because the pages play one after the other. I'll just drag in my logo on the page. Now the third scene I want is my tagline displayed. So I'll add a third page and add my tagline. I'll just change the font to make it bold. As you can see, it says the video is 11.5 seconds. That is too long for an intro. So I need to change the length of pages two and three to shorten it. I call them pages because that's what they are in Canva, but you can also refer to them as clips or scenes. Now that's done, I can add an animation to a page. So first select the page, then click animate in the top menu. 
you'll see a range of animations that you can apply to the entire page. I want my logo to fade in, so I'll select that one. Now I'll add another animation to the third page. I'll make that one fade in too. At the end of the video, I want the text to fade to black. So I'll add a fourth page, which is just plain black, and I'll set it to fade as well. As you will see, this will cause the text to fade out. If I didn't add it, the text would just stay there. So I'll just check the timing on each of these videos. They all add up to 6.5 seconds, which is the total time displayed at the top. Now let's preview it. As you can see, that looks good. You don't have to have an intro too long. Once you've finished finalizing the video, click download video in the top right and download as an MP4. You can then place this video in your video editor of choice and use it as an intro or outro. One further thing to add is that the block animation only works for text and not images. All the rest apply to the entire page. I've done a more detailed video on Canva video editing. You can check that out. I'll put a link to it in the description below. Tip 22, find font combinations and complementary colors. If you're not sure what fonts work well together, head over to canva.com forward slash font dash combinations. Here you can find fonts that look good together. Simply enter a starter font and it will show you the fonts that work well with that font and show you live examples. This is really useful. Following on from that, you can use Canva's color wheel to find complementary colors. Simply type in the color code or pick a color on the color wheel and it will show you the complementary color to it. If you click on the color here, you can access the color code or make adjustments to it. Click on the color box and you can enter the color once you click on this multicolored box. As promised, here are some useful resources you can use with Canva to help you find more images and graphics. Feel free to pause and bookmark these useful links. As always, if you found this video useful, please smash the like button as it will help promote this video. Feel free to subscribe with notifications and let me know in the comments if you have any other video tutorial ideas you want me to create. I'm always open to listening to new ideas and making videos around it. Thank you and I'll see you in the next one.